It's time now for County Wide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Brad Miller as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives here in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's County Wide. Well, good day, everybody, and welcome to the program. Brad Miller with you in our first countywide of uh, 2012. We thank you for uh, supporting us through the last year, and uh, we'll enjoy having you with us as part of our radio and television audience through the uh, the coming year. The first show of the new year uh, is a very serious matter. Uh, our guests today are going to be uh, Cottonwood Police Chief Jody Fanning and Detective Sergeant Todd Moore, and we're going to step back in time a little bit. Uh, recently, Cottonwood Police did uh, uh, reopen the Marisol Gonzalez homicide. Uh, this was a young woman, 17 years old, uh, shot to death March 24th, 25th, the night of there, uh, back in 1997. Police at that time uh, did an investigation. Uh, Marisol Gonzalez, a young woman, was uh, carrying her son almost to term at the time of her death. Her son Andrew uh, died along with her. The ter- uh, she had been shot uh, in the face just a short distance from her home in, in Cottonwood. And uh, the case is still unsolved. Uh, today, Chief Fanning, at that time a corporal with Cottonwood PD, actually worked on this case. And since then, Detective Sergeant Todd Moore, uh, I don't know if you've taken over, but uh, certainly uh, working this thing. Guys, we say good day to you. Hey. And uh, kind of a somber show that we're talking about, but that's kind of part of the reason I think we're talking about it is to get this case back out there after almost 15 years coming up the anniversary in March uh, and you want to find uh, maybe some answers that have eluded us so far so uh, let's just do this chief if we can kind of step back we covered it very quickly um, but on the morning of March 25th that day I guess what you got a call you worked? I was I, I was actually off duty at the time I was a patrol corporal uh, we were the, the police department received a call early in the morning, I believe it was about 6.30 in the morning, of a body in, in an alleyway. Uh, when we responded, the Marisol, Marisol was located in an alley uh, near her home. Uh, the investigation began. At that time, I was reass- called and reassigned to investigations, to in- assist investigations okay. with the case. Okay. Um, this was an obvious homicide. I mean, what did, when you, you got there and, or when the detectives at the time got there? It was, found... Yeah, it was, it was an obvious. There was no indication that this was a suicide. There was no indications of anything other than a cold-blooded murder. Gotcha. I want to remind our audience, this is an open investigation, and um, certainly the guys uh, here are going to have some things that we, we need to be careful about as, as we talk to. So I'll ask questions, and if we venture into any of that territory, uh, we understand that uh, some things probably need to be played close to the vest as we try to, to right uh, this wrong and, and bring this person to justice. Um, is, is there a suspect in this case? Can I ask you that? There's not. To say a pure suspect, no. We have um, people of in, in extreme interest okay. that we would like to further interview. Um, however, at this time, we just don't have enough to make an arrest on anybody. We're looking, that's kind of why we're here, we're looking for that final piece of the puzzle, as you might say, that corner piece that right. we need. When we say witness, or I'm sorry, when we say suspect and person of interest, kind of define what's different, define those for me. Um, well, <clears throat> a suspect, quite frankly, is is someone you have a lot of good evidence on, okay. you know they're guilty, you're ready to make an arrest. Gotcha. Uh, person of interest um, is somebody you may have some evidence on, okay. but you just don't quite have enough to take it to a grand jury to get an indictment okay. at this point. Okay. Um, and so that's really the difference. We need a few more steps to turn persons of interest into actual suspects. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and certainly in your investigation at the time and during you know that time, um, I guess it's, that's what, that's what kind of led to this. Certainly family members, I mean, I think all of our audience, we can assume neighbors, everybody, a typical police and investigation. And if, if I understand what you're saying is we got some pieces of the puzzle there, but not enough to click that last piece into place. Is that where we are? I mean, are we close, but you need a few things or? I, I believe we're close. I believe we're extremely close. Um, I just think we need one or two more people to <clears throat> step up um, to talk to us. And that's really why we're here today to get this out there. Uh, that's why we've been with Silent Witness. Um, we want to keep this out there in the forefront because right. uh, we need one or two more people to step up and give us those last pieces that we're missing um, to get this thing solved. We talked on tape, and our radio listeners may, may have heard that um, a week or two ago, uh, and you said something about at the time, you know, this was a young woman, 17 years old. Uh, 
that maybe her friends and, and whatnot, kids especially can be scared. Anybody can when something like this happens. Uh, is that kind of what you're hoping, that maybe someone who is young and afraid or for whatever reason didn't come forward then may now? Yeah, I mean, when this happened, I wasn't working at the police department at the time, but I was working here in Cottonwood, and I remember how devastating this was to the whole city. Oh, yeah. Um, you had a killer out there that was willing to kill a 17-year-old girl and her unborn baby, and it put a lot of fear in the community. And I think especially as a teenager, you're much more fearful of retaliation at that age than you are as an adult. As you become an adult, you realize that the bullies aren't going to hurt you anymore, right. and you're more willing to come forward. And so we're kind of hoping that's what's happened at this point. We're hoping some of these... Um, friends of, of Marisol, some of these people that were in this group, maybe older now have their own children, um, and it touches them a lot more now, sure. thinking that, you know, not only did her parents lose their daughter, but Marisol lost her son as well, and right. her mom and dad lost their grandbaby. And so we're hoping that touches a chord with some people, and they're not so afraid to come forward anymore. We would certainly encourage that, and anybody with information, and uh, let's describe what you're you're kind of looking for it seems to me any thread that you haven't yet been able to, to get a hold of is going to be perhaps important but uh, we've talked with a lot of police agencies over the years Steve Scourge with Silo Witness did a great show with us uh, some time back where he said sometimes people don't know that what they know is important they think well the cops already know that or the, you know it's already out there is that the case perhaps here that someone knows something but they don't realize that it's important oh that's exactly right um People sometimes see things or hear things that they assume the police might already know. Right. They might have told an officer 14 years ago about this, and it got lost in the shuffle, never got reported at the time. They didn't think it was important. Since I've been reviewing this case, and I've been reviewing all the transcripts of all the interviews, um, there's new things that have come to light that we didn't know about, just rereading those interviews. Um, so I know there's stuff out there that people have seen that they don't think is important. Right. That they've heard that they don't think is important. It may be important. Um, Call me and let me decide how important that piece of information is. Feel best, free to call and bet. give it to me. Um, when we say a case has been reopened, it, recently the, the, the thing in California with Natalie Wood, the celebrity who drowned and so on, um, I was reading that that was reopened because California law requires so because there was a change of testimony by one of the persons involved. Is there something like that here? Did you get something new? I think when we say reopen, oh, something's happened. Right. We, we've got nothing new, but Arizona state statute has us keep a uh, depository of cold cases, we call the cold cases, cases okay. where you've run out of leads and haven't gone anywhere. And every so often we've got to pull those back up and look at those cases. Uh, in this case in particular, um, we're coming upon the 15th anniversary right. in March of uh, Marisol's homicide. <clears throat> anniversary dates are just a good day to get it back out there and remind people what's going on. Um, we talked about the young people not being young anymore and having their own families. Right. Um, and then, of course, we got an $11,000 reward through Silent Witness um, that we put out there in these economic times. We hope that's enough to, to get people to come forward. Um, we, homicides like this just don't go away. They don't really get closed. You just run out of leads and you have to move on to, to right. other things. We're putting a lot of effort into this case. Um, we have completely gone through this case from front to back. I'm still reading through transcripts of old interviews. We're still putting it back together. And in doing so, we're finding new leads. And we're hoping with the phone calls we get and phone calls we're receiving that we can continue to build on those leads um, to take us to a conclusion on this case. A lot of compelling reasons to keep poking around. Oh, absolutely. Uh, at this, as, as you've, you've enumerated. And, uh, Go ahead, Chief. Uh, also to add, the, the, uh, as he said, the case has never been closed. We've uh, we've actually a few times reopened it in in years since um, because of updates or increases in DNA capabilities. Uh, we've recently okay. sent things back to the lab for DNA analysis because of the DNA capabilities has, have greatly improved since 1997. Uh, we're finding more DNA evidence things on, on different items. So it, as he said, it's never really been closed. We just have not really brought it back right. to full light like we are now. Okay. Once again, attention being focused on this. Uh, a tragic homicide almost 15 years ago, the anniversary coming up in March. 17-year-old Marisol Gonzalez gunned down in Cottonwood. Uh, two gentlemen here and a full department behind them want to solve that uh, and, uh, and put, and put uh, uh, bring to justice the person or persons responsible. Chief Jody Fanning, uh, Sergeant Todd Moore, our guest today. We'll take a short break. County White is back right after. Here in northern Arizona and throughout Yavapai County, people count on Orkin Pest Control. 
With over 100 years of combined experience, nobody knows how to protect your home or your business from harmful or annoying pests like the Orkin Man. To start service, contact your Northern Arizona Orkin Pest Control. In the Verde Valley, call 567-5100 or Orkin Pest Control in the Prescott area at 775-8772. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. If you're looking for a new pet that your family will cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Hey, honey. What's up, buddy? Honey? I think he's been smoking pot. Call 911. It's okay, Joey. I'm here. Can you hear me, son? I'm right here. Are you with me? Is he me? breathing? He's not Are responsive. You? Hello? <sighs> Honey, give me steak knife and a ballpoint pen. What are you now, doing? step. I'm gonna do mouth to mouth. No. No. You know lots of ways to help your child, but do you know what to do if they're using drugs? The partnership at drugfree.org can help. Welcome back to the program. It is countywide. Uh, Cottonwood Police Chief Jody Fanning, our guest today, along with Sergeant Todd Moore, talking about the Marisol Gonzalez case, uh, 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 killing of a young woman in Cottonwood 15, almost 15 years ago. Um, let's, Chief, if we can, kind of take us back a little bit uh, to what happened. And I know uh, one of the first uh, groups you'll probably talk to will be her family, those closest to her, whom she lived with, and those right. kinds of things. Did she indicate any kind of fear or, or hint to anyone, to them, that there was a problem? No, in our interviews back in those days, there was there was nothing indicated to us that she was afraid of anybody or in fear of her life at that time. Okay. Um, she was, you know, a 17-year-old soon-to-be mother. That was distressing her, but that that was all that she, any of the family members ever indicated to us. Right. Did there, um, it, it seems to me, I don't know how police work goes, but help me with it. When you get there and you, you find out what you've got, obviously you're going to go to the immediate area and to the immediate yes. family first. How quickly did a person of interest develop once you started kind of covering that ground? Was it right away? Did it take some time? Uh, we were we had a person of interest probably within the first three or four hours okay. of the um, initial call. Okay. Um, there's you know as in with any homicide, you your first look is typically the closest person to them sure. um, and then and then you start spreading out uh, the obvious is sometimes the first place you want to look and then you spread out um, and the person of interest developed per rather quickly she was shot was there a weapon found no the weapon was never discovered okay um, walk me through ex about what happened you said you got your first call about 630 so uh, yeah well, but she, the reports that at the time was that she left her home approximately 10, 10.30 in the evening. Um, she lived on 14th Street um, with her family. She had walked, and she, when I say left her home, she had walked outside of her home with her cordless phone okay. um, and was talking on her cordless phone at the time. Uh, the, <clears throat> we, we have several phone calls that she made from her cordless phone. Uh, we know where the phone calls went to. Um, she, her her body was discovered um, in an alley um, near her home. Uh, the phone still worked from that distance to her home. Uh, the we had reports of the gunshots occurring somewhere between 12 and 1. Uh, that we have a little bit narrower time frame with several of the witnesses, and then the body was discovered at 6:30 in the morning. Um, the gunshots, however, were not reported. Okay, I was going to say, gunshots, as of one o'clock anyway, and the the body not recovered. So, no one heard them, or we don't know. We had several people that heard them, 
just did not call the police department in regards to them. Um, oh my! Didn't know if they. I, I and I can't. I can speculate that they thought they were firecrackers. Sure. They all kinds of different things. But we had several people that heard the sound and then told us about it later. So she was I, not discovered for approximately five, six hours after the shots. Todd, time is everything in a case like this. It, it, she was nine months pregnant. It, yes. it begs to ask questions that are very tough about what might have happened had the response come as soon as the gunshots were heard. It, it's uh, true. I mean, it, we can only speculate, but yeah, it, there's if, a lot of. If we'd have been called immediately when the gunshots were heard, it's a possibility. Um, an officer may have found her in the alley. Um, EMS might have been able to respond and might have been able to at least save the baby at that point yeah. if we would have known. Um, unfortunately, uh, people get used sometimes to hearing gunshots. Um, even where I live is out near the range and you hear gunshots all the time. Sure. Um, you, know, you don't know why people don't call when they right. hear those things. There's, there's many reasons why, as Chief said, people think it's fireworks or gunshots they've heard in the past in the neighborhood. There's a lesson for us for the future uh, to, to, to kind of think about if you think something's up, uh, especially. Um, let's, I, I, I want to kind of tread lightly around this person of interest, but I, I have to come back to it um, because it does seem, and, and just, I hate to use the word rumor, but that's out there. You guys don't need to be told that. You know it. Um, but a lot of folks uh, really have essentially all but pointed a finger at a person or, or maybe a couple of people who they believe to be involved. Um, is it aggravating to kind of have a good idea that, well, this person maybe knows more than they've ever told us, and to not be able to kind of close the net, Chief? Is it's, I, it's, it's extremely aggravating for me. As I said, I was one of the original case officers, and I'm now 15 years further into my career, and I still can't, you know, give that family that closure. Yeah. Um, and I know that somebody out there has it. Um, and we have had several, uh, we had a, one of our persons of interest that we believed had additional information uh, just recently came forward and talked to us and actually took a polygraph for us. And we were able to, um, we believe that now that that person does not have additional information. Can I ask you, had that person not been as cooperative prior? Um, no. And, and no, they were not uncooperative they just were not cooperative okay so they be they've become as sergeant morse said earlier they've become adults and decided that it's time to to tell everything that they knew well and there you go and maybe that's really kind of the biggest lesson to take away today and why we're sitting here talking about it yeah. um, and, and brad if i can interject here absolutely. just for a minute um you know we're talking about the aggravation <clears throat> the biggest aggravation i've seen since i've been working this case um and, and reopening this is, is I know there's people out there, I know of at least one person or two people that were eyewitnesses that night to who Marisol was with, and one that might have actually witnessed the homicide. We know that, but they're afraid to come forward for whatever reason. Um, they've changed their stories since their original interviews. And, and the thing I want to put out there for people to understand is, when something like this happened, to understand we're, we're scared of the boogeyman, we're scared of the thing we don't know, um, but it, it, my feeling on this is whoever killed Marisol and this baby, they're nothing more than a coward. They're not the boogeyman. It, it doesn't take a very brave person to kill a 17-year-old girl and an unborn baby. Yeah. Um, so we need to get over that fear, kind of like when you get picked on by the bully in school. Um, the bully only picks on you because he knows he's scared of you. But once you stand up to the bully, he backs down. And that's what people need to understand. We're, we're there to help them. Um, some of these people may have legal issues. They might have um, issues with not being properly documented in this, this country, and they're afraid to come forward, afraid they'll get in trouble. Right. And those are things we can overcome with them and help them with, but we need them to come forward. We need to get this resolved. The coward that killed these two people has been out for 15 years, enjoying freedom, enjoying his life. We need to make sure we get him where he needs to be, or she needs to be. Okay. We need to take another break. Uh, Chief Jody Fanning, Sergeant Todd North, Cottonwood PD, uh, talking about the Marisol Gonzalez case, young woman gunned down, uh, 17 years old, happened 15 years ago. We'll take a short break. It's countywide, and we'll be right back after this. Here in northern Arizona and throughout Yavapai County, people count on Orkin Pest Control. 
With over 100 years of combined experience, nobody knows how to protect your home or your business from harmful or annoying pests like the Orkin Man. To start service, contact your Northern Arizona Orkin Pest Control. In the Verde Valley, call 567-5100 or Orkin Pest Control in the Prescott area at 775-8772. Packers, Viking, Packers, Viking, Packers, Viking, Red State, Blue State, Vegan, Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown, Downtown, Optimus, Center. We come to different conclusions. Half empty, half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, <laughs> our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Having a fire escape plan is very important to keep your family safe and together in the event of a fire. When you awake to the sound of a smoke detector and smoke in your room, don't stand straight up. Carefully roll off your bed and stay low under the smoke. If your door is shut, feel the door with the back of your hand. Slowly open the door if no heat is felt. Always stay low until you get to the outside of your home. Always have two ways out of your house and a specified meeting place somewhere outside your home. Home escape plans should be drawn up and rehearsed on a regular basis. This could be the difference between life and death if caught in a fire. We welcome you back to the program, our final segment with uh, Chief Jody Fanning, Detective Sergeant Todd Moore, Cottonwood Police Department, the Marisol Gonzalez case. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I feel optimistic after sitting and talking with you gentlemen that something is going to happen. You just see a room with, I, I don't know why, I picture just threads hanging from the ceiling, <laughs> and the more you pull, the more information uh, that you get. Um, we should say, I think you're not just talking to someone who may have knowledge. Perhaps you're the aunt, cousin, brother, co-worker of someone who you know may have knowledge, it might work if you can help compel them. You know, friend, I know that you were there or knew something. Can we have, can we ask people to kind of work on? Absolutely, the more help we can get, the, the better. It just seems that it's going to take a community effort to really kind of put to put this this, this sad incident and to rest. I'd like to interject, Brad. There's times we interviewed a lot of people yep. during this thing, but we are absolutely certain we did not interview every person that has information. There's people out there we didn't know had information, and they if we could get their names, they as Todd said, they may have information that we have never heard yet. The best and easiest step, I guess, would be what simply to call one of the two of you or the department in general. Uh, is that right? How should that work? And is, is Silent Witness a good resource for this? If I have information but I don't want to give you my name, can I go yes, to Silent Witness? Yes, uh, Silent Witness is a great tool if you don't want to give your name. You can call me even if you don't want to give your name. Um, okay. When you call me, at least I can ask follow-up questions I may need. Right. Um, and if you give the information to me and it pans out, we can still give you the Silent Witness the reward is still there available to you. An $11,000 reward being offered, I think, from a couple of resources from this case. That's correct. For information about this. The silent witness number is 800-932-3232. If you have information, now more than ever, uh, the guy's working 15 years, basically, uh, to to bring justice to this, uh, this young woman and her family. Guys. Keep up the good work. We Thank appreciate you. it. Next time we talk about this, I think we'll have much better news uh, and more conclusive news to, to report. Uh, Cottonwood Chief Jody Fanning, uh, Sergeant Todd Moore with Cottonwood PD, and the Marisol Gonzalez case. We thank you for joining us. It's countywide, and we'll see you next time. has been countywide a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday as we tackle the hot topics and talk to the decision makers across Yavapai County. That's countywide with Brad Miller and Paul David each Tuesday and Thursday on this Yavapai Broadcasting Station.